What's up guys? Today I want to talk to you about a series of cameras that are very exciting because they're affordable, uh, very common, and uh, really old school and mechanical. These are the M42 series of SLR cameras. M42 being the name of the lens mount used. Now this lens mount was actually invented by the Germans at Carl Zeiss in 1938. It's quite simple, it's just a M32 thread. So you basically just take the lenses and uh, screw them right onto the camera until they're finger tight. And that's it. What's great about them is they weren't copyrighted or anything like that. So a massive number of lenses and cameras have been made for this system uh, by many, many manufacturers, uh, both German and Japanese. So there are a lot of great options and they were so common that you can find these cameras pretty much at any thrift store uh, if you look. So I want to just cover the four cameras that I have, as well as some of the quirks of the system. Now, um, this is the oldest camera I have to show, which is from the late 1960s. But actually, uh, even this is kind of a second revision of the system. As you can see on the back of this lens, there's this metal pin right there. And this is something that was added later and kind of adopted by all the different manufacturers. Basically all this does is uh, when something in the camera pushes on this, it closes the aperture. So as you can see, as I turn the aperture ring here, nothing's changing in the lens. But if I push that pin on the bottom, you can see the aperture closing down to whatever you set. This is allowed uh, camera manufacturers to uh, design the cameras such that you can focus using the lens fully wide open, which makes it easier to focus. And then uh, right as you take the picture, uh, this little uh, mechanism in the bottom of the camera pushes that pin and closes the aperture down to what you selected. Let me show you. So I'm gonna put the lens on F16 so it's really obvious. And here we go. You can see it closed there, just right when you take the photo. That's not the shutter going you see in there, that's actually the aperture stopping down. You go a little slower. So pretty cool. Um, this Mamiya camera actually has a few other strange uh, features. Uh, as you can see here, the uh, wine knob is spring loaded. And what this does, this also lets you stop down the aperture, as you can see when I push that lever. And the reason uh, they did this, and really a lot of uh, the M42 camera manufacturers have some sort of lever on the camera to have you, let you stop down the lens. Uh, the reason they did this is the camera has no way of knowing what aperture you've selected here. So in order to get a light meter reading through the built-in light meters of these cameras, you have to force the lens to stop down the aperture to the setting that you've selected here. So uh, these levers on the four cameras I'm gonna talk about, they're in different places, but they do the same thing. They close the aperture and they turn on the light meter. In the case of this Mamiya, the light meter is actually on as long as this lever is out. If you push here, which you wouldn't expect to be a button, if you push here, it folds the uh, we rind crank closer to the camera body and now the camera is off. To turn the camera on, you flick it out like that. And then again, to turn it off, you push it. So kind of interesting. Other than that, these cameras, you know, are old, uh, 60s and 1970s. And uh, so they're quite simple, all mechanical, usually. Uh, some of them, unfortunately, take the Mercury battery, the PX625, which is difficult to uh, find today or difficult to find a good uh, alternative. But other than that, uh, it's all mechanical cameras. So even without a battery, you can have fun and shoot with uh, fully manual settings. So that's quite nice. Okay, next to show you is the Yashica TL Electro X. Now this camera 
was released in the early 1970s, and uh, it was quite exciting because it was the first camera ever to use an LED system for the exposure. The earlier Mamiya, on the other hand, has a more common needle, so it's an analog system where the needle moves up and down to tell you your exposure. Of course, that means that the Ashika needs a battery, and so it is a battery-powered camera. Uh, there's one of these, a t there's a 28L battery that goes in here, and so this camera does not work without the battery, but the benefit uh, is that at least the battery is something you can still buy in stores. It's not a mercury battery, it's just a regular alkaline battery. Uh, to help you with that, there's a battery check feature here. You push this when the green light turns on, you know your battery's good. Other than that, it's uh, j just as simple of a camera as the Mamiya. Uh, as I mentioned, you need on an M42 camera a lever to actuate the mechanical mechanism in here and turn on the uh, light meter. And that's done with this black uh, thing here. So you kind of hold the camera like this and with your middle finger, you push that. That's about it with the Ishika. Uh, it's kind of the biggest and the heaviest of the bunch uh, that I have. And they're extremely common, uh, really cheap on eBay. And they're hardworking cameras. I, I think they work well and uh, it'd be a great starter SLR camera for anybody. All right, uh, next, again going in order of date, is the Fujika ST801. Uh, Fujika is actually uh, just a consumer brand name for Fujifilm. So this is actually a Fujifilm manufactured camera. And uh, I must say out of the four I have, this is definitely the nicest. It has the most professional feel. It's much smaller than the other uh, three cameras in the M42 series that I have. And uh, it just, it kind of feels like it's the best built. Um, and you can definitely tell it was geared towards a higher end market because it has a one two thousandth of a second maximum shutter speed. The other ones have a maximum of one one thousandth. So obviously a much uh, more professional camera. It also is interesting because later in the M42 system, uh, bef kind of before these companies went to making their own proprietary lens mounts, they tried to add more features around the M42 mount. And unfortunately, unlike the uh, aperture uh, pin thing, the other stuff the companies added wasn't really standardized on before they all moved on to other lens mounts. So for example, this Fujika here, there's this silver ring around the outside that I'm actually spinning right now. There's a little metal knob right here and the Fujika special lenses for this camera would have a piece from the aperture ring that would then connect with this knob and it would rotate. So therefore the camera knows what aperture you've set. So with the f proper Fujika lenses, uh, you don't have to do the stop down metering. But what's nice is if you have any old generic M42 lens, it still works great because there's still a stop down lever and it works just as it should on any other M42 camera. So that's quite nice. And also it's just nice that they designed it that any lens can work. Other than that, again, uh, pretty much similar to the rest. It doesn't take mercury batteries, thank goodness. It takes the same battery as the Ishika. Uh, another benefit though is this one's all mechanical still. The, unlike the Ishika, the battery is just for the light meter. And uh, since this came after the Yashica, it also had LEDs. And uh, the Yashica and the Fujika, you can see they uh, wanted to advertise heavily that they had this, these cool LEDs. The Yashica has this cool atomic symbol there. And the Fujika has this fancy LED symbol here to advertise that it uses LEDs instead of a needle for the meter. Other than that, pretty simple. And uh, that's it for the... Fujika. Finally, I want to talk about the last camera produced. This is, uh, in terms of date, this is the late 1970s, like 1974 to 1979, I believe. This is the Practica MTL3, and this is definitely the dog of the bunch. It's, uh, it's kind of cheap in the middle. The metal feels nice on the top and the bottom, but this entire black band along the middle just feels like the cheapest, hollowest plastic. Listen to that. 
Uh, not very confidence inspiring. Other than that, it's a quite nice mechanical camera. You can hear, um, it has a much different shutter noise than the others. And uh, quite clunky. Uh, the shutter makes a lot of jarring. And really a step back, uh, what's interesting about this camera, for collectors of course, is that it is made in the German Democratic Republic. As you can see, it is proudly labeled on the bottom. And for those of you too young to know what that means, this camera was made in East Germany when it was controlled by kind of the Eastern Bloc Soviet Union pact. So uh, quite interesting that I found this in a thrift store in the US. I don't know how it got over here. I don't suspect many would be imported. I know other European countries did import them, but I don't know about the US at the time. Anyways, uh, this is, as I said, a definitely a step back. It still uses the mercury batteries and it has the needle metering system, even though it is the newest of the bunch in terms of production date. Uh, as usual, again, with the M42 cameras, it has this lever here for the stop down metering. You can see the mechanical bar moving inside the lens mount too. Uh, Definitely, uh, uh, you know, kind of a strange and fun camera. You can see the weird... <laughs> I, this is kind of a thing a lot of practicas have, not all of them. Um, this is the front-mounted shutter button, which is actually quite uh, ergonomic because you can push the uh, stop-down metering lever and the shutter button with your same finger. But <laughs> when I switch to this camera from the other cameras or any other camera, I keep trying to push an invisible shutter button that doesn't exist up here on the top. Uh, anyways, it, what's nice about this one as well is it came with the original lens. Uh, the Pentacon factory was another East German camera manufacturer and uh, they made the official lenses for the Practica. So uh, kind of cool to have that set, uh, but definitely the, the least reliable but most uh, probably interesting and collectible of the cameras on the table today. Before I conclude the video, I just want to parade out a series of M42 mount lenses. There's uh, quite a variety. Uh, here we have everything for 35 millimeter to even this super nice uh, Pentax made 50 millimeter f1.4 lens. This is one of the notorious radioactive lenses. So don't keep that one too close. But anyways, uh, one thing I wanted to point out about all of these lenses is there'll be, there's a mysterious uh, lever on the side here. It's very hard to see. Let's see how close I can get to show you. This one has kind of the most obvious. When you slide it, it either exposes a white A or a red M. And actually, all of these lenses have it. Um, simply, what this does is it allows you to use these lenses on the really old cameras that existed before the pin was designed. So by flipping this so the M is visible, the aperture is always at what you set. And flipping this to the so the A is visible lets you use the pin to close the aperture. That's all that means, but um, just uh, know if you get one of these and you can't figure out why the aperture doesn't stop down or why it doesn't do exactly as I described in this video, uh, make sure that you have this lever slid so the A is visible uh, for any of the cameras I showed here. And really, the M42 cameras kind of became even more popular around the time after they put this pin in. So in general, you'll always want to keep your lenses on A. There's not really any reason to use the M. Well, that's about it for this video. As you can see, there's quite an interesting range of uh, lovely all metal, mechanical, and affordable 35 millimeter SLRs that used the M42 system of lenses, uh, even I'm shooting these videos on an M42 lens. It's a 28 millimeter f2.8 with an adapter to my Sony NEX camera. So a really uh, interesting series of lenses and cameras if you want to experiment. And again, uh, cheap, high quality, all mechanical. Uh, great for a first SLR for anybody wanting to learn film photography. 
So with that said, if there's uh, any questions, please leave them in the comments. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you.